looks like we are live. I'm just going to double check we are. Because yesterday I had some teething issues. But it looks like we are certainly live on Restream.io. I assume we are live on Mixer and Twitch. We are just not live on our main website. But I can fix that later. This live stuff's actually really cool. Um, we've done a we've it's taken us a very very short amount of time to get to get done so uh, to get set up so welcome everyone to the uh, Minecraft Education Edition uh, well actually it's more Minecraft EDU but we are going to focus on Minecraft Education Edition as a platform uh, and so welcome to everyone who is taking part and is joining me yes my favorite Wookie is in um live uh, live and well from Wales. i assume everything is well in in wales joe and congratulations uh, i haven't spoken to you since your big day we got uh, no mixer that's interesting live on twitch okay well let's just um i'll fix that later i'll do some tests and we'll fix that later. Thanks to the audience for helping out. And hey, from Norway as well. So let's get started. Yesterday, uh, and these are all saved to YouTube. So if you want to check out our YouTube channel, which I'll link later on on Twitter or Facebook, you can keep up with this. This is going to become a library of uh, resources throughout the um, throughout the month. And we're going to be doing, my aim is to do two live streams every day, different content each hour or so for uh, for an entire month. So we're going to end up with a lot of content. Uh, yesterday, the feedback from yesterday's, which was all about settings. It wasn't the most exciting one, but it was all about settings. The feedback we've got uh, so far has been incredible with one teacher literally emailing me to say, this is what I needed. I've been waiting for this for months, couldn't find it, asked for help, looked for training. Um, and here you are live, you know, doing it live uh, for free. So. So this is really important to me because, hey, not only is it a difficult time because of the virus um, and everyone, um, I hope, self-isolating. Let's get it through our heads, Brits. Um, let's self-isolate. But, but most importantly, we um, this is the stuff we should be doing anyway. It shouldn't take a, a virus. I'm going to get a bit political ranty on you, but it shouldn't take a virus to disrupt us in this way uh, and have us think about the way we can teach at home or we can hey Tammy um, and how we can thank you for joining you must be what, what time is it there for you it's like 4 a.m or something um, uh, but how it shouldn't take a virus for us to think about how we can think differently about education and 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 work together online and have our children collaborating online and and so on and I know that there's all sorts of things we need to take into consider consideration like you know differentiation and and equitable access to uh to, to to the technology and whether or not we actually have the infrastructures in place and safeguarding for children of course those things are super important but we've had two decades to get a lot of this thought out and ironed out and we're not doing it and all of a sudden there's this global crisis and i am inundated and i mean hundreds if not thousands of requests for help 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 um, I, I need to start teaching differently. I need to, my children are at home and I don't know what to do. And I'm just like, wow, like we've had decades to work this out. And I've been trying to say this, you know, as have many, many, many other people, Tammy Schrader, who's with us among them. And it's like, we, we, we should have had this right by now, or we should at least have been better at this by now. And so I wanted to start with that simply because I'm not saying, oh, you terrible people out there, we could have been better at this. That's not what I'm saying at all. We need to come together now. It's my duty as a, an ed tech educator to do something about this, to help everyone to make it easier on them. And let's face it, you're stuck at home with your kids. You want something to do and you want something for them to do. And so that is what I'm here for. So let me just um, get my workstation set up appropriately. There we are. I can now see the chat. Uh, now, one thing I will say about the chat is I am getting chat from... Uh, Twitch, I'm getting chat from Facebook, I'm getting chat from Twitter, uh, and I can see it all on one chat. So when I answer a question from someone, hey, morning Barb, in Canada, I reckon, God, that's early for you as well. Um, thanks for joining everyone. And um, we, 
I will, I will be seeing chat from multiple places. So if I answer a question, you might not have seen it in your chat. I will try and reflect and, and so on. But just be aware that there are many, many people coming in. Yesterday, we had 118 people on our first stream um, in years, which, which is which 118 people, parents, teachers, maybe even students. That's incredible, right? So let me get started. Today, I... Uh, is a continuation of yesterday. Yesterday was all about the settings. And just to recap for those of you who aren't aware, we, we discussed settings, control settings, general settings, video, audio, everything you need to know to get your game set up properly. Check out those videos on our YouTube. We also went into game settings. So if we go to create new, uh, which is down in the corner here, but we can also go into view worlds and new world here. We then went into all of these settings. So what's the difference between survival and creative? What does it mean to go into a peaceful, easy, normal or hard world? Uh, what what should we, uh, what permission level should we give our students when we go into a world? What are resource packs? How do we, what does it mean by activate cheats? All of that was covered in yesterday's, um, for in, a, in roughly sort of an hour and 20 minutes of, of, of uh, good, I believe articulate, step-by-step um, -step guides, show coordinates, immediate respawn, always day, all of that stuff was in there. Hey, Sil uh, uh, Sylvain, how are you? Um, thank you so much for sharing. Let's get as many people in here. So that's us already got, hang on, let me get this straight. We've got one, two, three, that's us got four continents already. That's incredible. Uh, and so today is a natural progression from that. You've done all your settings, you're in the world and you're relatively new to this. So anybody who's watching who's already a Minecrafter thinking, yeah, 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 Stephen, I've done this. Move on to the redstone, move on to the contraptions, move on to the maths worlds. We're not there yet. We've got an entire month together to do that. And so what I'd like to do is take you to the next step, which is going into a world and just being, just playing, just understanding the controls and, and what it is you're looking at and, and what the world can do. Later on this afternoon, we're going to look at Education Edition features specifically. So let's start with another new world. So back to the original menu. We're focusing on Education Edition specifically, but you can follow about, uh, you can follow um, on and say, uh, uh, you know, if you've got Java or if you've got Bedrock, you can follow on with me. Um, and today, certainly for, for, for this hour, everything will be the same. Uh, Tassie Thompson in Norway is saying, could everyone just indicate the country that they're in so that her son can enjoy the international learning environment that he's in? So if you're in from a different country, uh, there's Pennsylvania, for example, um, from the 29th Doctor. Uh, is that Doctor Who reference? That'd be awesome. Um, one of the doctors coming in from Pennsylvania in 1972. Um, so let's just um, let's just uh, let's just go and 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 please do let us know. I know that uh, Selvin is in El Salvador. Um, I know that uh, our our Joe Goldwyn is coming in from Wales, um, and so Tammy Schrader is in Washington State in the United States. Barbs in Canada. Um, so this is this is fantastic. Yesterday we hit five continents. Let's see if we can do it again today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with play and we're going to go view my worlds and new world. Here's the ones we did yesterday. Ah, oh, Carrie Killian's friend. Yay. I do. I do. Yes. Um, yes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on new and we're going to go through this one more time. So today I'm just going to call this learning the basics. Now, remember what I said, I'm going to keep reminding you of things as we go on. Um, learning the basics, naming your world is really important. I can't tell you how many teachers say to me, I had this amazing chemistry world and now I can't find it. And it's because they didn't name it and it automatically got named new world. Um, and so they've got 64 different versions of New World and can't find it. Always, always, always name your world. We're going to make this creative because we're just going to uh, play around and, and move around and, and learn the controls. I don't want to do survival because um, I think I'll do survival later in the month. But for the moment, we need to keep in mind that we're, we're thinking in a teacher or parent capacity. And what we want to do, morning Mr Isaacs, also in New Jersey actually, um, what we want to do is we want to uh, look at how we're creating lessons, not necessarily how we play Minecraft. OK, uh, difficulty peaceful because I don't need mobs or monsters or zombies or anything like that. 
nobody's going to be joining me, so this permission level doesn't matter for this particular one. I'm also going to make it, uh, for this first one, I'm going to make it an infinite world. Uh, sorry, a flat world. Simply because we're going to do the... Con In fact, no, you know what? Let's do infinite. It's easier. It's easier to make it all infinite. Let's do an infinite world. Um, my video yesterday shows uh, the difference between uh, flat, infinite and old. We have no particular seed for this world. We just want a random world. I do want coordinates because I'm just going to show you when we move around how that works. Uh, respawn doesn't really matter. Cheats doesn't really matter. Code builder we don't want because I don't want to accidentally press the C key and end up with that interrupting our stream. Uh, I do want to make it always day. This is really important because I don't want it to go night time because we're just going to be doing a lesson and that gets in the way and it gets dark and it's, it's uncomfortable. Let's do classroom settings down here now. Uh, I want to make it perfect weather because I don't want it to rain. It's noisy. It'll affect the stream. I don't need that. We do want mobs because I'm going to point out chickens and sheep and things. Now remember, back to my video yesterday which is on YouTube, mobs doesn't necessarily mean monsters. Mobs means all creatures, monsters and friendly, like sheep and parrots and as well as creepers and zombies. But I've switched mobs off up here in peaceful mode. Peaceful or monsters, easy, normal or hard. I'm in peaceful mode, so I will get mobs. I just won't get monsters, which is handy. Lots of teachers get mixed up with that one. Uh, so let's allow mobs. We can allow destructive items. I don't mind if we've got TNT. I might even play around with that and show you what that looks like. In fact, I will. I'll show you what destructive items do and why it's important to have these either switched off or at least managed in your classroom environment. Player damage doesn't really matter because I'm going to be in creative mode anyway. Um, so we'll just leave that on. I don't want an immutable world. And the reason for that is because an immutable world means I cannot do anything with it. And so I'm going to have that switched off. I want to be able to change this world and build in this world. And player versus player's damage doesn't matter because nobody's in there with me, um, which is which is nice and handy. So let's just press play now that we're happy with that. Double check all my settings. Yes, play. Settings can be changed later, so don't worry too much. It's not like when you click that play button, you're done. But it's really important to at least be aware of the world that you're entering, particularly if you're the teacher and you want your children in a set environment with set rules. Take the time to do that. Now, first things first, and we're really going to go back to basics here because this is important for those who are just joining us. I'm using keyboard and mouse, and I'm going to assume everybody else is, but if you have a controller, remember you can press escape and go into settings, and you can check your keyboard and mouse, your controller, or your touch settings. Now at this stage, if I get you to do that for me, if I get you to press escape, particularly if you're brand new to Minecraft and you've just logged in, go to settings, keyboard and mouse, and click hide keyboard and mouse hints off. That will take away the writing that's on the left hand side of the screen, which you can't see. Um, there you are, you'll see it there. Forwards, back, left, it's on the left hand side now, W, S, A, D, space, and my camera probably hides the rest. I'm going to get you to go into settings, and I'm going to get you to go to keyboard and mouse, and I'm going to get you to hide that, switch that on. Sorry, I said switch it off. Switch it on. And that hides that, which means we have a full screen and we can kind of concentrate from there. Hey, little guy. There's a little guy running around. Now, you're going to have a totally different world. Whether you're doing this with me right now or you do this later in relation to one of the videos, you know, watching back at the videos, you're going to have a totally different world because every time you start a world, it's entirely new. So you won't have a village and you might not have people running around in front of you and you might not have cliff tops and so on. You might have a beach or an ocean and you're on a small island or something. Um, I once did some CPD and uh, we started and I, I said to the teacher, the first group of teachers the first thing I want you to do is go and chop down a tree and this woman said there aren't any and I said ah there's always trees generally always trees because I had never spawned in a world without at least one tree she said there's, there's there's no trees and she was literally on a little sand island of about five blocks by five blocks in the middle of a vast ocean and that was it <laughs> and the chances of that are so 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 slim and it was so funny um I would have liked to have kept that seed world actually but anyway so First things first, if we're using keyboard and mouse, um, on the assumption we are, please do check out your own controls. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to look around, okay, and just just 
you're in a 3D digital environment. You're basically in a digital replica of what would be ultimately the real world. You have sky and you have air around you and you have grass and you have structures and materials and there's soil and, and everything is around you. And so what we're going to do is take our mouse and we're just going to look around. Our mouse is like pivoting our neck and, and kind of moving around to have a look around the room that you're in right now. Um, and so I'm just going to do that. Just get used to orientating around. So right behind me is, is a kind of a hill and a cliff, but right ahead of me is a village. This is a nice spawn. Um, so just get used to doing that. Look right above. And if you put it on always day, you'll notice that the sun will always be right above. OK, but if you look down, I'll see, oh, there's mushrooms, giant mushrooms um, and so on. So just get used to looking around. See if you can spot things moving. I mean, I had a villager over there. Let's see if he moves. There's one moving in the distance over there. Uh, you might see sheep. You might see cows. Who knows? You might be near water. We're going to try and avoid water initially. I don't have any here to, to, to talk of, but I will move around and, and show you different things. So the next thing we're going to do is, um, and I'm assuming left-handed, right-handed, but you can swap. And the way you would swap that is, again, control, uh, sorry, escape key to go into the menu, settings, and then go into your keyboard and mouse, and then you can change any of these to suit. So quite often a teacher will say, I need to move the mouse to the other side of the keyboard. That's great, we'll do that. Um, and we'll just, uh, we'll just change the buttons accordingly. So you can go in and do that. And if in doubt, you just press any of these keys to go back to what it was, or you go to the very bottom and you click default settings. It'll take you back to the beginning if you get confused or mixed up. You can also go into controller and see what the controller controls are or touch screen and see what the touch screen controls are, depending on the device you're using. So let's now take the middle finger of our left hand, in my case, and we're going to press the W key only. And you'll notice that when I do that, I walk forward until I hit a space. I'm going to hit this edge, this block edge. Now, this might differ when you hit an edge, this might differ for you. And here's why. Press escape, go to settings and then keyboard and mouse. And you'll see there that there's a button called auto jump. If I switch auto jump on and go back to the game by pressing escape to get back to the game, if I press forward, I automatically jump around. So every time I come to a bump, I will jump up it. Just going to turn around and go back down again. I'm going to go back to the other side. You'll notice if I get here, bump. That happened automatically. I didn't have to press anything. However, I don't like that because when you're trying to build and you're building in confined spaces particularly, you tend to get jerked around a lot and you kind of jump up and down a lot and it's, it's, not, it's not helpful. So I'm going to press escape, settings, keyboard and mouse, and I'm going to switch that off. You might want to do the same. I think it's also the same if you're on a controller and it's also the same if you're on touch screen. Switch those off. Well, depending on your preferences. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to press W again and you'll see this time I'm going to go forward until I can no longer go any forward, any further forward. Here's the thing though, if I move my mouse at the same time, so we're going to use our middle finger to hold the W key and we're going to look around at the same time, I can start to navigate. I mean, I'm stuck down here now, so I'm going to have to be careful about where I navigate to, but I can navigate around. What I can also do is I can press the S key, so moving my middle finger on my left hand back one key to press S, I will go backwards. So backwards, W forwards, S backwards, W forwards. Super easy, right? Also, if I want to what we call strafe left and right, quite often when kids are talking about, like they're playing Call of Duty, not that kids should be playing Call of Duty, but very often they are and they'll say to me, oh, I just strafe so that people can't get me. Uh, what they mean is they use the or I use ring finger on your left hand or index finger on your left hand to sit nicely on A, which takes you left, and D, which takes you right. So now you can do W forward, S back, A left, D right. And you can just, and then, and then use the mouse as well. So suddenly you find yourself looking around. I'm only doing sideways now. I'm just going right by holding the D key, but I'm circling with my mouse. And that's going to take some time. I've been doing this for 11 years. Well, with other games, I've been doing it for 30 odd years. But, um, 
but with Minecraft specifically, I've been doing this for 11 years. So I, this is this is okay for me. You might need some orientation time. Please feel free to revisit this video on YouTube and just keep uh, uh, just keep revisiting and, and, and trying this out. But your main ones are move the mouse, look around, W. Now, that should leave, if you're using a keyboard and mouse, that should leave your thumb resting somewhere near the, the, the space bar. So now what I'm going to do is, you'll see if I press the space bar, excuse the noise of my keyboard, it's a mechanical keyboard. Very nice, all lights up. Quite expensive too, but man is it noisy. Um, so that's me just jumping up and down there. If I walk forward and then press the space bar, I can decide what levels I want to jump up. So I'm going to jump down. I don't have to jump down, but I am. Jump up. Fall down. Jump up. Fall down. Jump up. And you can, I mean, if I wanted to go over there, I'll show you how that's handy for climbing things. So I'm just going to do jump. And then I'm going to do jump, jump, jump. And we're just going to keep jumping until, I'm not sure we can, yeah, we can't, we probably can't get any higher. There we go. Uh, we can't really get any higher, but that allows us to climb around by by looking with the mouse, pressing W with our, our in, uh, middle finger, and then the space bar whenever we're ready to jump. This allows us to navigate the world. These are super basics. And then what we can do is we can fly. So this is handy for, say I didn't want to be here and I wanted, say I was, I, I, and I'm always trying to use classroom examples. So say I've spawned here and it's all very exciting, but what I'm actually looking for is a river because we're going to do river pollution today. We're going to look at the way rivers flow and how they carry water and what happens if there's a pollutant at one end of the river. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double tap space and you'll see that it doesn't really look much like I'm, I'm if I'm, on the ground, I'm that height, but if I double tap, it's almost like hovering, like when Iron Man takes off. So you do this double tap, hover, he's now looking up at me. Hey, little guy. That means I'm now hovering above the ground. And when I press and hold space after that, I will go way up into the air. Bye, village. That's actually a really cool village. And I can look around. And now I can see this vast world with forests and snow-covered mountains and rivers. There's a river, there's a swamp, um, there's another river. So what I can now do is the same controls apply. So this time I'm going to press W and I am going to head over using my mouse to look around, maybe using A to go sideways. I'm going to go left a bit, then I'm going to go right, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to look for somewhere to land. I'm going to land on this little flat patch that's down here that my crosshair in the middle of the screen uh, is, is pointing at. And it's the crosshair we're gonna talk about next. So I'm just gonna hover, hover over here. Now there's two ways down. Let's get over this piece of land. We're just gonna look directly down to do this. I'm just using the mouse, pulling the mouse back to look directly down. And then that puts me directly down here. There's two ways to get down. I can hold the shift key and you'll see that I drift slowly down to the ground. Alternatively, I can double tap the space bar. And with a little thud and some graphics, I crashed on, oh look, there's some salmon. There we are. Um, and so we are now where I wanted to go. So remember, I'm just gonna recap on that. That's double tap to take off, space bar to, hold space bar to fly, look around at where you want to go, Let's go further along this river to that little flat patch in there instead then. We'll head over here and then when we're ready to land, we just look down at where we would like to land and we either hold the shift key or we double tap space again. There we are. And because you're in creative mode, you won't die. You're not, you're not going to die if you're in creative mode. This is another nice little space. Um, and so what we're now going to do is we're going to look at building. And I think we'll build here actually. This is a nice little... So the first thing I want to do is I want to clear a tree. That's what I'm going to do. So I am going to walk over to this tree using my controls to orientate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, using the left mouse button, uh, again, the orientation, it takes time. Lots of people destroy when they mean to build and they build when they mean to destroy. And so we just need to get that right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to left click on the tree. And you'll notice I start destroying 
and this is just to take space there we are and then I can start to do that a bit faster I'm just using my mouse to look around and what I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of this tree sorry tree in fact you're desperately needed right now in the real world and here I am just chopping you down mercilessly. You'll notice that there's different types of trees as well. So this I've chopped down as an oak tree, whereas this one over here is a birch tree. You also get jungle uh, acacias and so on. Um, so that's quite nice. I've, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this tree as well. If I was in survival mode, I would be chopping those trees down to collect the materials. But actually, I'm in creative mode, so I just need to clear some space so that I can build creatively. There we are. Now, that'll do. I'm also going to clear the grass away because that's just a pain. So you'll see here that there's two different types of grass. There's grass blocks, which are solid, and then there's this sort of grass effect on top. And as you'll notice, I, if I look at it, I don't know if you can see that clear, too clearly on the stream, but if I look at it, you get a kind of a, a vector grid around it that says you are looking at this block or you are looking at this. And it tells you what you're looking at. And that, with the crosshair in the very centre of the screen, is how you get rid of what it is that you want to get rid of. Lots of people will destroy a block and say, but I didn't think I was destroying that one. I thought I was destroying the one next to it. It's all about the crosshair in the very, very centre of the screen. So now that we've cleared enough space, what I now want to do is build a little house. And if you are playing along beside me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to press the E key, E for echo, or Apple, if you're in Norway. Um, and there we are, there we go. Now I'm just going to take a piece of wall. So I'm going to, first things first, let me show you what this is. This is the introductory, introduction, sorry, to your inventory. Um, and your inventory is a tab that you go into that gives you all the materials you want. And in creative mode, you can add any material you like. And here's how that works. The tabs at the top of this screen are as follows. This one is built... Uh, kind of stuff, the, 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 the materials that are all, all kind of designed for construction, things like scaffolding or different stones or walls or fences and so on. The next tab is weaponry and armour and objects, swords, axes, pickaxes, tools, miscellaneous foods, that kind of stuff. The third tab is household items, um, chemistry stuff, cartography tables, what else have we got in there? A stone cutter, an ender peril. I don't even know what that's for. I think it's some sort of teleportation device. Redstone lamps. We're going to be using those later this week to show you redstone uh, and lighting systems and electricity. Barrels. Really nice for aesthetics and storing things in. And then here we have natural objects like dirt and crops and ice and sand and plants and sponge. <laughs> uh, I suppose sponge is natural, isn't it? Um, raw foods, etc. And so trees, saplings and so on. And so what I tend to do, however, is I tend to stay on this one. I tend to stay on the magnifying glass, which is your search. This gives you everything. If I just scroll with my mouse wheel, you'll see that I have everything in here, including all the elements. You'll see there that I've got mag manganese and chromium and vanadium and titanium and so on. They're all in there. But it's at this top little bar here that I'm going to search for bricks. There we are. And I get all the different types of bricks. And I'm going to take a brick block. And to do that, I am going to click once with my left mouse button, which then puts it in my hand, if you like, and it kind of allows me to move it around the screen. Then I'm going to take it down and I'm going to put it in one of these nine slots. These are my inventory slots. I technically call them like my pockets. I'm taking it from my backpack and I'm putting it in my pocket so I can use it quicker later. Click left click and that means and you'll see there's 64 it bunches in 64s um, most objects some less but generally you'll get 64 of those don't worry about the number however you don't need to keep going back and getting another 64 because in creative mode you have all uh, that you need so it looks like 64 but it's technically in creative mode it's as many as you need you'll notice that when i press escape now you'll see there's no number in the bottom left uh, down at the very bottom of the screen and so you'll see that it's in my hand. If I press the following keys, however, two, three, four, five. If I press the number keys through to nine, you'll see that it goes through my inventory slots at the very bottom of the screen. 
until I'm, so there's two, one, two, one, two, one. And that's how you move between multiple things. So brick just now, then a door, then some glass, then some wood for the floor. And I'll show you as we go on how to do that. So here's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna go and find a nice space to build. So I'm gonna build against this wall here and I'm gonna just look at the place I want to build. Now, you can attach a block to any other side of any other block. So a lot of people think you have to build on top. Teachers will say to me, I couldn't, I couldn't build on the side. And I said, no, you can, you can build on the side, watch. So we're gonna do on the top of the grass and I'm just right clicking now. This is not left click, this is right click to place. Right click, move along, just using the A key. Notice that I'm not sort of doing that and then going along and then doing that. I'm using the A and D keys to move left and right. Then place, place, place. And actually this time I'm gonna go and place on the side. I could even place on the top of the lap of the next one. So I can place at any point, I can build a little wall. So I'm gonna do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a wall that is two blocks high. So notice I'm doing that two blocks high. And I'm gonna, I think that was there. Yeah, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm now gonna build outside of it. And then I'm gonna to stick to the side of these ones. And now, for the sake of the stream, I'm just gonna keep moving with this. But if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can pause this, do your own thing, and then play me again, and we'll do the next part. So here's the thing. I actually want you to build this three blocks high. And this teacher uh, you know, that I'm working with will quite often go, but I can't see three blocks high. I'm only, your character, if I press F5, your character is only two blocks high. Um, so if I turn around and kind of look at my character there, you'll see that it's only two blocks high. So I'm just going to go back to my original position there, pressing F5. That's how you change your, your screen, um, your perspective. Now, there's a way you can do this. You can jump and hope to be able to, play, to place it. It doesn't always work. Whoops. See, I'm making mistakes already. So I'm just going to get rid of those. Left click to get rid of. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do one of two things. The first is build a scaffolding. So I'm going to build a stair, then I'm going to jump up it, and now I can build the rest of this wall. When I get down, I can take that stair away. Alternatively, I'm going to double click my space bar. There we are. And I'm going to fly up, and then I'm just going to build. I'm going to get the right angle, and then using the D key, I'm just going to move myself along. So flying is really important for the, your ability to be able to design uh, spaces. There we are, so that's now three high. And if I get back to where I want to be and double click the spacebar, I'll fall back down and the wall is now too high to jump. So I couldn't get in my building even if I tried. So the next thing we need to do is create a door. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just pick a place. I think my door would be nice here, here actually. And I'm just gonna destroy this one and this one. Remember, your character's two blocks high, so to get through a doorway, you're going to have to be two blocks. If that was there, you wouldn't be able to. And if that one was there, you wouldn't be able to. So you have to be able to take two blocks to get into a building. So if we're talking about, always making this about lessons, if we want our children to build, or you want to build something for your children that is historically accurate, you want to build a local castle or a local place of heritage or something, and it has doorways, you're gonna to need to know how to do that. You want your children to go through this door. We built the Washington State History Museum, one-to-one -one scale, beautiful, gorgeous. We want the children to go in, you know, they see it from the outside and they're like, oh, I've been here, you know, Washington State, you know, children are like, I've been here. And then I say to them, good, in you go. Now we couldn't get them going in if we hadn't built appropriately sized doors, at least two high, one wide. Of course, you could make your door wider, but we're not going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to press, I'm going to make a window. So let's say we wanted a window here. This time I'm going to knock this one out and this one out. So now we have what feels like a little house. But I don't know how many of you have grass in your house. So we're going to replace the floor. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press E again. Always E to go back to our... Um, uh, back to our inventory 
And then I'm just going to take, I'm just going to put in there planks. Now you don't have to type. I'm typing because I know what I'm looking for. You could just look and think, oh, in fact, if I take planks out, you could just look around and think, actually, I quite fancy that material for the floor or that material, orange or whatever. But I'm going to get a wooden floor. We're going to get actually spruce wood planks and I'm just going to click on those and I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to put them in number two. So left click to take, left click to drop them in your pocket, press escape. And now I'm going to press number two on my keyboard and that gives me those instead. Bricks, planks, bricks, planks. And then I'm going to go in and I am going to left click, right click, left click, right click. And that is how I'm going to replace my floor. I'm going to do it super quick because I can, but I'll do this one slow again. Left click to destroy, immediately right click to replace. Destroy, replace, destroy, replace, destroy, replace. And you'll see kids doing this all the time. This is what they do to make things uh, quick. And we'll also put one in the doorway. So now we have a wooden floor and it's really not taken us that long. Just a few basic orientation controls, an understanding of how to access our inventory and a couple of tools, a couple of materials, that's it. And so I'm then gonna go outside and have a look at my house again. It's kind of missing a, a roof. So, Here's a number of ways we can build roofs. We can either take a, let me go to the inventory. Uh, so I pressed E to go to inventory and I'm going to take uh, a number of, hey, Kurt, rocks in the house from Austria. Check that out, Tassie, we have an Austrian in the house. Um, I'm gonna take oak wood planks. I'm gonna take oak wood stairs and I'm gonna take oak wood, if I can find them, there we are, oak wood slabs. Planks, stairs, and slabs. You would just search for them otherwise. So uh, where are we? Stairs, oops, spell it right correctly. There we are, so stairs, that will give you all the different types of stairs. Slabs will give you all, what is going on with my typing today? Here we go, we'll give you all the different types of slabs. So I've taken oak wood planks, oak wood stairs, and oak wood slabs. Here's the three different types of roof. The first, of course, I jumped, double click on spacebar to jump, and three, four, five, six. I'm just going to fill a part of the roof here. So you'll see there that the way I did that was, and I'll just do that again for you, just give you an idea of how we did that. I started by placing the roof on top, of course, of the ones that we already have and then sticking it to the side of these ones because there's nothing underneath. There's nothing underneath here. So I'm just gonna stick it to the side of the others. And I did that three times. Here we are. So that gives me the roof. The only issue is if you look at your house from this angle, it's kind of a big chunky roof and it doesn't look very roof-like. I don't think anyway. I'm quite particular about aesthetics. Now, I'm gonna do a stream later this week about using stairs and slabs and planks to create specific effects like window sills and um, borders on buildings and, and stuff like that. But for the moment, we're just keeping it real basic. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use slabs, not stairs, but slabs. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. If I do that, you'll see that actually it's half the size. And if I do that and then jump down, you'll see that it actually looks a bit better. If all of it looked like that, it would look a lot better. Well, I think anyway, a flatter roof. Um, but we also have stairs. And stairs can look like this. And I'm only going to do one row of these for the moment, and here's why. And so if you look at the side there, you can see that the stairs create an almost diagonal, more roof-like, right? Well, it depends where in the world you live. Maybe not in Morocco, but certainly in Scotland, where we need water runoff. And so, or in Switzerland, where they have those big giant roofs that are like practically are the house. I love that in the Emmental region. It's gorgeous. Um, and so this is why. Let me just clear a bit more space so I can give you this basic demo. Here's why it works like that. If I place a block, I'm just going to place a slightly darker block and then I'm going to place another one there. Let's look at how slabs work. Slabs work in such a way 
that if you place what if you imagine this is split in half it's not but imagine it has two halves top and bottom not left and right that doesn't work but top and bottom so 50% if I point my cross here at the 50% lower mark and right click I will place a slab that is on the lower half if I look at the upper 50% and I place the same slab material I'll end up with it on the upper and so you can decide where slabs go. And that's actually quite handy if I want to do, say for example, one, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four. Let's do that. And then let's build one. So it's lower, upper. This one here is lower. This one here is upper. We can build a staircase, which we can then, instead of having to jump up like this one, we can actually just walk up. So these are little hints and tips for thinking about your design. We could also build a roof like that if we did stuck one to the side and then stuck one to the side again. And so we could create this really nice roof effect. But what about stairs? Stairs are slightly different. Stairs work like this. If I do a row of stairs, one... In fact, before I do a row, let me show you something else uh, that stairs do. Stairs are very particular and they do take time to get used to. I'm going to fly to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to face this direction and I'm going to place a stair. So you'll notice that the stair orientates with its flat back in the direction you were facing. And it's curved, it's kind of cranky, creaky bit there. It's stair, if you like, ahead of you, in front of you. If I go this way and place another stair, you'll see that it does it the other way. And if I orientate myself that way or that way, Stairs will always orientate themselves in the direction you place them. So keep that in mind. Sometimes we get people that make roofs and what they'll do is they'll just do this. And then they'll wonder why their roof looks like that. And it's because it's two stairs side by side and it doesn't necessarily, I mean, actually that's quite an interesting design for a roof, I imagine, but it's not what they were looking for. Um, that means that you could, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you could do that, which gives you quite a nice design. But here's the other thing about stairs. If I go one, two, and then one, two, what happens if I add a corner? If I add a corner, it literally gives me a corner, which is fantastic. Because if I want to make that my roof now, and I'm just going to take away one row of slabs, I can now do that and you'll notice when I add it it forces a corner when I take it away it corrects this one back to a flat stair so I'm just going to add a corner and then I'm going to add another one on the other side and now when we look at our house we have what's looking like a better roof so we're always thinking about design corner stairs right and so that's nice now what we can do is we can uh, Let's just say we were going to make this part of the roof slightly different. And this is where it gets a little tricky because I'm going to add another corner and another corner. But this time I have to be quite clever about facing somewhat this direction, but attaching it to the side of the last one. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. If I take away those slabs, you'll see what we've done there. We've effectively created this nice round space. And so here's the thing. We can make a roof quite interesting if we do the following. Go back to slabs and this time we're going to fill in the middle that's a nice roof right but what if we added more stairs now the issue is if we add stairs on top of stairs this is what you get if you just add stairs on top of stairs that's what you're going to get we don't really want that what we want is we want to add a stair and actually just for the sake of making this show up I'm just going to make each of these slightly different colour. There we are. I, and actually I'll get a different type of plank. Give me a second just so I can show you what this looks like with slightly different colours. There we are. So we have eight different planks in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stair on this one, this one, this one and this one. And that gives me even more of a roof shape. 
and then we're going to do the same here, 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 and here. And that looks more like a roof. So when teachers will quite often say to me, I built this building and I wanted it to be in the style of a UK building, for example, but I couldn't get the roof right. Why? Um, we do an exercise on stairs. I just say to them, come and we'll do stairs together. And we do a little quick live stream or a little quick demo face to face or whatever. And we do stairs. So keep, it, keep, keep, keep that in mind. The other great thing about stairs is if you have a flat surface like a wall, you can place a stair and then place another stair, just like we did with the slabs, and then place another stair facing in that direction, but just hooking it onto the side. And what you end up with is some stairs to get you up to your roof. Hmm? We can go from there. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to finish this off by showing you what this entire roof would look like if done in that style. And then that will do us for the basics. I'll, I'll recap and then we can kind of go from there. So I'm just going to chop all of this out and I'm just going to do the stairs all the way around the building. Remember, I'm facing my orientation. I'm going to get rid of those ones the way I want to orientate. And then I'm going to, I'll just replace this now with standard oak. Uh, where are we? Actually, that'll do. I'll face it, I'll place it with that. So I'm just going to fill the gap. One, two, three. Always attaching to the side. So all I'm doing is I'm just looking for a place to attach it. And then I'm going to do that again. You can re-watch this video as often as you like to keep this, uh, to keep this fresh for you. And that leaves us another gap. So what do we do? We fill it and we add another layer. Now this time I'm going to add corners and that's what we end up with. Hi from South Africa. Wow, so we have hit another continent. We've got five continents again today. No, one, two, <laughs> three, four. That's our fourth continent today. Wow, that should have been way easier. Um, <laughs> But um, there we go. So that's a nice little house. What we haven't done is we haven't added a door or a window. So here's the last thing we're going to do. Let's go in and add glass. And when we type in glass, remember that was E and then that was uh, uh, E for our inventory. And then I typed in underneath the, um, the magnifying glass, we added uh, the word glass in the search. And then I'm just going to take my favorite glass, which is white stained glass. And then I'm also going to go and search for a door. And then we get a selection of doors here. The only one I don't want you to use is the iron door. We're going to talk about that later when we do redstone. Now I'm going to take the spruce door because I happen to like that one the best. It's got a nice medieval feel about it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and go to my window. And then I'm going to place a glass pane there. I'm going to go back into my inventory and type glass again because you'll notice that there's glass panes and there's glass blocks, white stained glass. So I'm gonna take that and put that into my last slot of my inventory and place that in there and you'll see the difference. The glass pane is, is a pane of glass in, held suspended inside that block area, whereas the glass block is quite literally a glass block. And so the difference between a glass pane and a glass block looks like that. I personally prefer the panes because it gives you a little windowsill and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back outside and I'm going to place my door. So I'm going to go to door, which was number eight in my inventory. And I'm going to place on the floor. I can destroy it again. So I'm going to place it on the floor. Click, click, right click, left click. Now here's the thing. Once it's placed, I can then right click on it to open it and right click to close it. So my house has a nice little window and a nice little door. And if I go inside and I right click on the door from the inside, I can close myself in. And so I have a space. So we're gonna leave this there. That's um, 50 minutes of the absolute basics. Let me just recap on what we've done today. So we started off with basic movement. So our basic movement was, remember, Look around using your mouse. That's just looking around and orientating yourself in the world. Move with your left hand keyboard or swap the keys, use a controller, however you want to, you prefer to play the game. But movement is forward, W key for me, 
backwards, S key for me, left and right using A and D, and then jump is, to, uh, is space bar. If I want to fly, I can double click space, just double tap to hover, and then space itself, hold space to go up into the sky, and then the same controls, W, A, S, and D, apply. You can move around and you can swim to the swamp or the river or whatever. To get back down, you press shift or double tap space, and you will land. And then what we did was we built a house by looking at, doesn't matter what you're holding in your hand, we can press left to destroy and right to place. Left button to destroy, right to replace. Once we've done that, we were then able to press the E key and go into this tab, which gives you a search bar and all of the materials you want. You can select, search for, or type in. I mean, you might type in box and then you get shulker boxes or jukeboxes. You might type in green and you'll get everything green. Note there's a difference between green and lime, for example. Um, and so on. So we can take yellow, we'll just take yellow concrete, and then we can just place that in the house as a table. There we go. I'll show you better tables later when we do a, we're going to do a furniture stream and look at how to make nice furniture. But at the moment we have a yellow table by placing it. Um, we can destroy this land here to make ourselves a small garden. We're going to do farming later this week so you can have a garden and crops and so on. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that there. And actually, I'm going to make this world. This is the world we're going to build. We're going to build this world out together. Uh, maybe even have some of you join it later. Um, and then we are going to, what else did we do? Inventory. Oh, yeah, we did stairs and we did slabs and we did blocks. Hello, sheep. We have a visitor. I might capture him later and put him in a fence. You wandered into the wrong patch there, buddy. Um... Catherine has a question. Would it be correct in saying uh, that all the things we covered today are also applicable to other versions of Minecraft 2? Yes. So this is not just Education Edition. This is Java. This is Bedrock. Um, depending on what you're using it to control it on. I mean, kids that are picking this up, I'm talking Education and uh, sorry, Minecraft in general, kids that are picking this up on a, a Nintendo Switch or an iPad or whatever, they'll have their own control mechanisms. But generally, if a teacher who has PC or Mac in their classroom wants to get started with Minecraft, these controls are universal. Um, and so they can, uh, and particularly uh, for, for their education edition version. So slabs, remember bottom and top of a normal block, you can interlace them so you can create these uh, the stair system. Then we did stairs, we did corner stairs, and we used that to build a little house. Uh, we added doors, we added windows and did glass windows and panes, and hopefully that will get you started. Um, give me feedback, drop me some Facebook images of what you built um, while you were watching this or after you watched this, and check out, I'll uh, Facebook out my YouTube uh, details. Also, if you're watching from Twitch, which I know um, our colleagues in South Africa are, and Mr. Isaacs is, for example, I'll update my Twitch to have our YouTube uh our YouTube details on there because that just means that that library will build up and you will all be able to to follow. Thanks to everyone uh, who joined in, including the great Doctor Who who came in with us. Um, thanks to everyone who joined in. I will be back at 6 p.m. GMT, so work that out in your own times, and we'll be doing Minecraft education Ed, Minecraft Education Edition specifics. So we'll be doing things like the allow deny blocks, NPCs, cameras, border blocks, boards, posters, slates, and the advanced book and quill. I will see you there. Everybody stay safe and healthy. Self-isolate. Protect your loved ones. Bye, everyone. Bye.